Welcome to Sierra Club Chronicles. Mississippi Governor Barber and Senator Cochran cleared the way for oil companies to drill off Gulf Island National Park. These backroom politicians weren't counting on 12 Mile South Coalition. Ordinary Americans determined to get oil and gas drilling out of the Mississippi Sound. It's a special place and it's a treat to go. Even if you just went once a year, it was still as a kid. Ha! Huh, that was the highlight of the summer. You know, we went to Horn Island. And uh, the islands are the barrier islands and they protect us from the storm surges so that we haven't been hit as badly through the years with the awful storms. When Horn Island was, became a national seashore, I was delighted. Uh, we didn't have to worry about um, it being destroyed. Didn't have to worry about anybody trying to develop it. Uh, didn't have to worry about any all the gas rigs around it. Uh, my dad owned a portion of Horn Island, and uh, the family wanted to donate the property to the fish, uh, National Park Service and retain the mineral rights, but the Park Service refused. They wanted the mineral rights so that they could preserve the island and no one could come back later and do anything to it. At the time the Park Service took over, it didn't occur to me that this is going to be a good thing. The environmental protection end of it didn't come in, you know, the resource management end of it didn't play into it, but over the years I saw the importance of it. We came to appreciate the Park Service and what they were doing out there. I go out there to relax. All the knots get out of me, all the stress is released. And that's the same thing when them people go to, to the islands. Over 500,000 people a year go to those islands. My point being is, once you destroy something, you can't bring it back. The, the current threat uh, began uh, literally upon the inauguration of Haley Barber as governor. Nothing would improve education more than the active involvement and support of parents and families in our children's schools. I voted for Haley Barber because I felt Haley Barber would bring a better image to Mississippi. I mean, we're always perceived as this backwoods, redneck, Ku Klux Klan, rebel flag waving, bunch of ignorant rednecks. I thought maybe Haley Barber could come to the, to the state. I mean, he's a Washington insider. I thought that might be the man to really make these changes for us that we desperately need down here. When he ran for governor, he received over $300,000 direct oil and gas campaign contributions. The first thing Haley Barber did during the legislature in 04 was to introduce this bill to open up the barrier islands and state waters to offshore oil and gas exploration. It was a very far-reaching piece of legislation that had opened up 225,000 acres of water bottoms in the Mississippi Sound to drilling. Bad legislation, horrible. It, it, it took away all of the Department of Environmental Quality's authority over oil and gas and gave it to the Mississippi Development Authority. They promote chemical plants, industry, okay? This is what they do. Haley put this bill together and did not ask the people who it was gonna affect and did not even consider what the people wanted. Haley did not run his campaign to promote oil and gas around Gulf Islands National Seashore. That would have been political suicide for him. He would not have been elected had that happened. As far as I'm concerned, all Haley seems to be interested in is his clients in Washington with the oil and gas industry. And uh, of course, Haley Barber being part of the um, uh, secret Cheney Energy Task Force, uh, certainly uh, I think uh, if, if we ever get our hands on the notes, we might actually be able to, to determine 
where this idea came from. Special interest, it's the same old story. I mean, this is a classic example of it. But it happened so quickly that people just didn't know what was going on. They were, this is our new governor. We have to listen to him. Or, I mean, maybe this has some merit. So it passed. Then a year later, the federal legislation came in, and that's what started this recent movement. There's all sorts of rules and regulations, as you can well imagine, with the National Park Service that deals with oil and gas. All of those were swept aside by the Cochran Amendment. Buried on page 24 of the uh, Supplemental Appropriations Bill for the Iraq War, Homeland Security, and Tsunami Relief, two paragraphs dictated that the Park Service would get into the oil and gas business as their first priority and protection of the natural resource of Gulf Islands National Seashore would be second. Basically undid the Wilderness Act. We feel like we've been sold down the river and I know these are very trite statements, but they kind of sum it up. I'm not in this for politics. I'm not, I'm not a political person. I'm pro-business. It has nothing to do with politics. It's about the issue. Next year will, will be 80 years that our family has been transporting people to the barrier islands. My father would sell tickets out of a little wooden tackle box. 1926 started the business up, and I've been running a boat since I was 18. This is what we love. Okay, folks, whenever you're ready, we can start tearing your tickets. Rob, you do that? This is my grandfather. This is a picture of him in the wheelhouse of the Pan American Clipper. My dad and Jane Mansfield on the pier at Ship Island. I asked my dad, why are you wearing a suit on Ship Island? He just happened to have his sport coat on the boat that day. We do have an agreement with the National Park Service uh, to never carry more than put 1,200 visitors on the island at one time. We realize, hey, this is our national park here. It's a major part of the quality of life down here for the folks on the coast, but it's also a major economic asset to the tourism industry. I'm a real estate investor. I've been investing for the last 25 years here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, and um, just uh, give real estate seminars on how to invest. I've been on the Gulf Coast my whole life. I've seen the good times and the bad times. And I've gotten involved in this, really involved in this, around April, May. Stan Flint called me about the, uh, the, the bill that um, Senator Cochran had, had put into the defense bill. He said, well, some groups of people in the community got together and we want you to be the spokesperson and the chairman of this coalition. And I said, well, Stan, I'm, I'm pro-business. I'm for oil and gas drilling. And he said, well, can you give me 10 minutes to explain the, the facts? And I said, I'm always open. Dolphin Island, Alabama, less than 50 miles from here, which you can go see what the oil and gas industry has done to that paradise. That's paradise lost, as we refer to, to Dolphin Island. Uh, and we certainly don't want to see that replicated here in Mississippi, which is exactly what will happen. The next thing is, is and I'm not a what if man, a what if, if a storm does come. If a storm or hurricane comes, I mean, who's, who's going to man these rigs? They talk about the runoff and the spillage that comes off these rigs. But what happens during a storm? Who's going to be taking care of this runoff and this spillage? When Haley put this together, all he's seeing are these dollar signs. And God bless him, that's great. But it's wrong, Haley. And you know it's wrong. And you know the will of the people don't want that. So when he started explaining to me the pluses and the minuses, the reasons not to drill, overwhelmed why we should drill.
these houses that are still boarded up are houses that were boarded up because of the storms earlier this summer. And uh, we had, you know, two very rapid ones and they just haven't gotten boarded up in hopes that that'll keep the rest of the storms away. 1699 was when the first French explorers came to this country. And on April the 1st in 1699, they made it over to the Pascagoula River. And uh, my uh, dad's family were some of the original settlers. You have your interest in this island, but we on the coast are more or less the caretakers. And that's what we want to keep on taking care. And I mean, and, and the way it got started was simply the people in Jackson would not listen to the people on the coast who this directly affects. I mean, uh, the islands belong to everybody, not just the people on the coast. So it's been a pleasant surprise to see, see it coming from all directions. People I never expected, you know, to be in one room together, have been in one room together talking about this on common ground. Several of us are conservative, Republican, five of them are conservative Democrats, and then there are others that are liberal Democrats. But we're not there because of political affiliation or political beliefs. We're there because we are feeling about what is trying to be done to us. This is a, this is a very delicate strip of land. Hurricanes do enough to it. We don't need to add to it. It's there, yes. it protects us from storms. It's there for other reasons besides just the National Park. I understand that uh, Trent Lott is a neighbor of yours. One house between us. Well, I, you know, I just do not have an oil rig in my backyard. But I can't, you know, expect to have all the benefits of power and energy and not be willing to try to find a way to produce it. Well, I've said a few things to him. <laughs> the thing is, when we see Trent, he's home on vacation. And, uh, and you don't impose upon somebody's vacation time to discuss political things. I'm sorry, I don't think it's time when you see him out working in the yard like he was on Monday with his weed whacker to stop and say, hey, look, we got a problem, you know. I was operating the ferry and one of my friends in the charter boat industry called me and said, Lou, we got a problem. There's a boat out here, oil field exploration boat working south of Horn Island. It looked very suspicious because it didn't have any shrimp booms on it or anything else and I know it wasn't a long line boat. Tom was able to get close enough to it to take some photographs. Lewis called me, Bones, Bones, there's a boat out here. <laughs> and uh, I said, okay, Lewis, calm down. Let's, let's take it a step at a time. But he was very upset. The next day, the seismograph vessel with Horn Island in the background was the front, on the front page of the Sun Herald. It was great. I was very disturbed. The governor had made a statement that there would be no seismic testing done until there was a study done. I mean, I thought we was going to slow this thing down and, and do our homework and do our leg work. And next thing, this thing's out there jumping up and biting us. They sure didn't let the coast people know. I mean, you found out the hard way. Oh, I picked up the paper, what wanted, and there it was on the front page. When you see a seismograph boat working, that only means that they're getting ready to drill. I felt, again, like we had been taken. That was the trigger that brought in the public reaction. Okay, it's worth the campaign. We needed a bigger forum. It's worth a big rally. The Coliseum will hold about 8,000 people. The purpose of the rally is to get the people all under one roof and, it, and really to, hey, how many people's here for it? How many people here against it? And of course, we were holding our breath when we picked the date because August is hurricane time and we were just holding our breath that we weren't going to have a hurricane. It looks like we're going to make it. We made arrangements with the, with the director down there to see if we could put 5,000 people in the Coliseum. It's probably a gamble. Um, a lot of people are saying, you're not going to do it, um, but we're going to try. We can do it. And that's the idea of this coalition. 
and one man in New Orleans stopped the interstate from going around the French quarters with exits off of it. One guy stopped it. And if you sit down and roll over and don't do anything, it, it, it won't be stopped. Signs and then some poster signs. We have invited every politician. We invited every senator. We invited the governor. Yeah, everyone's invited. Everybody who loves this place needs to come to that rally and needs to support us, needs to call their politicians and send a message. Okay, who's gonna help me? All out? right, here we go. Thank you. You know I have that bad knee oh, to yeah. There we go. Well, my father was Walter Anderson, and he was an artist who's becoming increasingly known. I learned to know Horn Island through his work. He was able to see clearly there and, and experience the world uh, with all his senses and with no threat and no feelings of pressure. Who were there trees left on Horn Island? Yes, I mean, Horn Island. I'm going to give you another. Yep. Osprey nest right up there in that tree. Make loud noises yeah. and scare, <laughs> scare all snakes away. In the middle there. One of the gifts I think that Horn Island gave my father was the ability to see things as a whole rather than in pieces. When you're on an island, the size is limited and you're able to grasp the whole of the place. I chickened out. You didn't go all the way across? Didn't I got down to the swamp and, and I decided some... that I really needed somebody else with me to holler. <laughs> I have seen a water moccasin. Well, I got the stage set up. All right. Beth, you the judge? I think you have something here that has never been done. Uh, drilling in national parks and drilling in uh, environmental protected areas. You have saved the islands. And I think this is one of the reasons Haley Barber is trying to do that is because he wants to open up that abundance of resources, natural resources that we have all over this country that have always been protected, no matter whether you've been a Democrat or a Republican nationally. And he wants to open those up. So I, I think simply to fill his coffers so he can run for president. I'll have more goosebumps when I see nothing but heads. Lots of heads. You know, and people standing up around the perimeter. I want to see it packed. You know, I'm afraid, I was hoping we'd have kind of bad weather today, but it doesn't look like we are. <laughs> so, you know, I'm scared. <laughs> Usually my glass is half full, but today it's not. <laughs> Let me tell you what. The problem is there's language in that bill that allows this type of drilling to take place in any state park in this state. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's where the wake-up call should come in. That's yeah. right. That's uh -huh. where if it starts here, we're setting a president throughout mm -hmm. the state and then, right. then national. <laughs> you nervous? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm almost nervous. <laughs> this way and go out and then come back in through the turnstile so you'll be counted. Okay. What's happening? Turn address and we'll mail that for you. Yes, ma'am, and every voice counts. I'm a little sure. disappointed. I thought by now we'd have a few more people, but I understand they're coming in late, and uh, that's typical of Mississippi Gulf Coast. Everybody's laid back on a Sunday afternoon. I'm trying to be positive, and I see people still filing in. There's people here that I never expected to be here that probably will never agree on anything else together, but they agree on this. Thanks for your support. They're starting to come in. Thank you, sir, for signing in. Have a sticker. Since you got your program. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I hope more people come. We want them to keep coming and coming and coming. They're not nearly enough here yet. Hacks. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
and gas companies and service companies like my company work very diligently to make it as safe as possible. But what they don't say is that most accidents are caused by human error. It's humans that make mistakes. And no matter how hard everybody tries and know how great the technology is, the risk for a tragic accident always exists. And if you're going to change Governor Barber, it is going to come through rallies like this, and it's going to come through public opinion. Because Organizers we spoke to after Sunday's rally say they felt like they were celebrating an election victory after more than 3,000 people took time out of their Sunday afternoon to show up in support of the 12 Miles South Coalition. We're going to see our islands on every newspaper in the country with people showing photographs of the islands and the rigs and saying, do not let this happen to us. They had previously estimated that as many as five to 7,000 people might attend. Still, those who did turn out say the state and federal politicians who've helped lay the groundwork for oil and gas exploration near the barrier islands should take note of the growing grassroots movement opposing it. The ministry suggests the war over the Gulf Islands National Seashore has only just begun. It's about the issue and the, and, the, and the will of the people of South Mississippi. And we got that message out today. And we, we, we feel like that, um, you know, like when you just become mayor or just be, won a governorship, that's what we feel like today. We're very, very successful. There are two new twists tonight in the oil and gas drilling controversy. Mississippi Senator Thad Cochran says he is willing to encourage the federal government to purchase the minimal, mineral rights near the barrier islands. The 12 Mile South Coalition has been asking for a federal buyout, saying that's the best way to protect the islands. Cochran also announced today staff that the senator wanted to have a meeting, a uh, private meeting, with me and discuss the offshore drilling campaign. And of course, I was taken back by that. Cochran also announced today he would file a bill in Washington that puts a moratorium on natural gas drilling in the Gulf of Mexico. This, this is as big a, a, an event in this campaign as we have experienced today. I'm suggesting that we have uh, full consideration given to a moratorium until we fully understand the environmental consequences of drilling within that area. When you can get the chairman of appropriations, who is one of the four most powerful people in this country, to agree to buy out uh, the mineral blocks and the federal uh, blocks, that's, 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 you know, a, it, it is, we're halfway home, in other words. Mr. Pete, yes, I didn't realize how many deckhands we had on this thing. And people, I still hear that from people, you know, the little lady at the bank says, well, I'm afraid y'all are fighting, you know, uh, you're losing battle. And I said, well, if you think like that, we are. But no, we, we can't think that way. We've got to, we've got to keep going here and, and hope that we can turn this around and we can. Without the islands, the devastation would have been so much worse because the islands helped protect all of this area. I just shudder to think what had happened if the islands weren't there. Well, the islands uh, would be covered with oil and gas. We would not have any islands today. No. We would not have any beaches today. Downstairs it was a library, and upstairs it was my study. And then on top of that was the tower that you went to to watch birds. This was our living room. All of the debris that you see here, this big pile was in this room. We just pushed it out and threw it over this debris pile. 
Uh, and I was just because I, I was the original bag lady for a week, and I really know how they feel now. When I was going from pillow to post, and you weren't quite sure where you were going to spend the night, and you know. And, I think maybe it's all playing into the 12 mile coalition's hands because it's showing what we were talking about that we're just not a bunch of a hooping and hollering people that we did have our mission was factually based. As far as Dolphin Island, that's exactly what we said was going to happen and it sure up. There you go. You have just a small hurricane. These things are going to blow right up on the on the wilderness island. They're going to they're going to either cut the the, the woods, or swath through the woods, or they're going to wind up on the beach, and they're going to have to channelize the islands to move these massive structures. I mean, doesn't it have to do with global warming? In my mind, it has to do with global warming, and I should think it would be like a, a wake up call. I kind of compare it to Berlin 45 after the war, those scenes of, of the Germans digging around in the rubble. What we can do right now as citizens is start trying to come up with alternative fuels. I mean, we need to, number one, drive less. If your car doesn't get 20 miles a gallon or more, you shouldn't be driving. It ought to be against the law. <laughs> No doubt about it, things have to change. From Yosemite to the Everglades, our national park heritage is at risk. To learn more about what you can do to help protect America's national parks, monuments, and seashores, please visit us at sierraclubtv.org. Funding provided by the Ford Foundation, with additional support from the Sierra Club Foundation.